Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Mental Sweat Show, episode 13 with Detroit mm. Lions and former University of Oregon safety Brady Breeze. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Thanks for joining us, Brady. We're glad to have you on. Appreciate you guys. Good to see you all, too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the Lions season, man. Lions are on a roll right now, getting in the playoff hunt here. Um, how's the season been so far? And uh, what do you got coming up these next few weeks? Dude, it's been good. But, yeah, we're really on a roll right now. Um, yeah, we're going against uh, the Panthers on Saturday. Um, a little Christmas Eve game, so that should be pretty fun. But uh, it's been real good. So I got here um, five games ago. I, w- I got an injury settlement after preseason, got hurt did some therapy and stuff um, in Arizona and then came back here um, right after our Miami game. Um, so I've been doing like practice squad stuff, just kind of getting back into the flow of things. Um, but super, super pumped for this game this weekend. It'll be my first game playing in a while. So I'm hyped about that. Yes, sir. Um, but it's been a, dude, it's been a great, great time. Been learning a lot of good stuff. Um, just been working on, you know, my techniques and whatever. Um, but it's been nice being back with the boys because, uh, like when I got released with the injury sentiment, you don't really know where you can go. Like you can get picked up at any time as soon as you're healthy. Um, but there was a loop where I wasn't allowed to get picked up by the Lions until like week nine of the season. So I was just sitting there waiting, like hoping like, you know, they would give me a call. I did some tryouts with uh, Houston, did a tryout with uh, Detroit. And they're like, hey, like, you know, we would sign you today if we were allowed to, but we got to wait like, you know, another week. So as soon as I was eligible to sign with them, they flew me out like a few days later and then boom, like I signed with them. Um, but it's good to be back. Yeah, that definitely felt like uh, the coaches really liked, you know, what I did last year and, and did an OTAs and camp and stuff. So it's nice to be back. But um, yeah, we've been winning a lot. You know, we won uh, what is it, six games since I've been here? Yeah, so the last last six wins that we've had. You know, I've been here, which has been great. Um, but yeah, things have really turned around. Like when I first got here, we were one and six, and just the vibes were whatever, but we, we had a couple close games and stuff. And so we could tell like, okay, we got some real good talent. We had a great camp, but it just really took a turnaround for the season. Like I feel like guys just kind of really put it on each other. Like, Hey, we got some talent, got a great quarterback, got some good defensive guys, good offensive guys. Let's put this thing together. And we've been rolling, you know, we got a chance to make the playoffs and stuff. A couple of things need to happen, but we're really in, you know, our coach always says, you know, you're in control of your own destiny got to go win you know win out and then you know hopefully we get a chance to make the playoffs so we'll see what happens but we're feeling good about it you know we just got to keep rolling yeah you talked about your coach there a little bit uh how cool is it playing for Dan Campbell because he seems like he's one of like the ultimate football guys like the ultimate coach you want to play for yeah dude he's legit um he's like I don't know how to describe him he's like one of those guys that's like all about grit. Like he always sits there, oh, grit, you know, hard work, passion. Our type of guy. But he really is. Yeah, he really <laughs> is like that. Like the dude's a grinder and like he doesn't, I don't know, he doesn't like take shortcuts. Um, he's super into special teams, like always trying to like come in and watch film with our special teams coach, like figuring out what plays we can do, you know, what we can adjust. Um, so he's definitely all about the little things, but he's just cool. I mean, obviously all the offensive linemen love him, you know, just because he's such a gritty guy, like tough dude. Um, So he's fun to be around, dude. Like defensive guys, we love him too. He's just fun. And he's so passionate. And I feel like after we lost um, on Thanksgiving day to the buffs or to the bills and uh, everyone was obviously upset, but he was like, dude, like we should have won that game. Like we were that close to winning the game, but we got something going. Like let's keep this thing on the roll. Like don't get down. Don't get all upset, you know, that we lost, whatever. Like, we can really go do some good things here. You know, we're only halfway through the season damn near. Um, so let's keep rolling. And ever since then, we've been rolling. It's been great. Yeah. Um, but he never he never talks about the future. He's always talking about, like, the next week. Hey, we got this game. And I, I think the guys definitely appreciate that just because he's very positive. And he doesn't put a bunch of pressure on anybody. He's just like, hey, man, it's up to you. Like, this is your guys' team. You know, obviously, I'm here to lead you, but – He's legit, dude. Yeah, he's a great coach. Yeah, isn't that isn't that great? Just the beauty of the NFL being that even if you start off with a one and six season, you could end up coming back and turning that entire season around. In college football, you lose six games. Like that's kind of like 
you're you're screwed. Like you can't come back from losing six sorry, games. Sorry, boys. You're, sorry, boys. You're going home for Christmas and not coming back till spring ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and so. also just watching hard knocks with them in the off season. Speak a little bit to like having that camera crew in that like fall during your fall camp and and how that was like you know you were you were highlighted a number of times especially in the meeting room when they're doing the singing scenes i know everyone oh, yeah. sent you those videos yeah yeah it's pretty funny um yeah dude it was weird so uh before before we left for like our little break in the summer during otas um our position coach is like hey guys you know we can joke around and say a bunch of like you know informal stuff in here but he's like <laughs> You see this little hole right here, and they have just carved like a new hole. He's like, "That's where the camera's gonna be." So if no more, no more of these jokes. Like we gotta be in here serious, da da da. So I thought that was kind of funny because sure enough, when we came back, there was cameras freaking in every corner. Like you couldn't walk anywhere without being seen. Like you're you're at a walkthrough, just chopping up with the boys, and um, people would be like, "Hey yo, like shut up," because they'd be like a big mic, just like barely popping like in the scene, and so everyone's just like, "Oh," and he just like fail. <laughs> But you know, like the camera is kind of from a distance, so you can't really see them. But then it's the microphone that gives it away, or it's someone with a microphone on their shirt. So they like have to kind of come up to you, hey, dude, like I'm the federalities, like, you know, like be, stay away from me. Don't say any dumb shit around <laughs> uh, me. Did I get it? Did it yeah, I bet. Did it get a little annoying for you? I mean, it wasn't bad. Like they weren't, the cameras weren't following me. They're following like the, <laughs> the superstar players, whatever. Not yet. Uh, so I thought it, 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 it was, right? it was kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, we have, we'll see, <laughs> but it, it was weird. Um, it was kind of funny. Like I, I only watched the first episode of uh, hard knocks, um, but there was a lot of stuff that was missing and I knew like there might be some stuff that was missing, but there was like arguments in the, you know, meeting rooms and stuff, like all types of crazy stuff where you're like, dude, this is going to be insane on the show. Um, but obviously the coach like must have went after like, hey, like you're not putting that in the show, like that's embarrassing. I don't know. Right. Because we were in the special teams meeting and this guy was just being a dummy. And obviously the coach like was getting pissed off, but he's like, Hey, like we're not we're not putting that on the show. Like, no way. Yeah. Um, but I was hoping it was gonna be on there. I'm like, dude, that's some good T V time. Like that's, <laughs> that's some good drama going on, you know, for camp and stuff. But, you know, obviously they cut that stuff out if you're not allowed to or whatever. But it was cool. I mean, I feel like you just play football. Like, you know, even when we were at Oregon, you know, there's still cameras following us everywhere. There's always a guy mic'd up. It's not like you're noticing the cameras that much. You're right. just focusing on trying not to screw up in practice or trying to memorize the new plays that are installed today and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. I mean, it's cool to look back and see some of those clips and stuff and I watched the hard knocks. Yeah, you talk. I mean, you've played for two pretty cool head coaches with uh, Rabel and Dan Campbell. So I know this is like a big kind of question going on right now. So who do you think would win in a fight or just a one-on-one -on -one if they got in the trenches one more time with Rabel and Dan Campbell? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I can't answer that. <laughs> That's tough, dude. Yeah, I don't know. They're both like gritty dudes. Uh, I mean, shoot. Both of them were actually had a lot of receptions. Like Vrabel, I think he had 12 catch. He has like the record, like 12 catches for 12 touchdowns or something like that. And then obviously he was a stud, you know, um, linebacker and stuff for the Patriots. But to win one on one, I don't know, dude. That's tough. Yeah. Dude, our, our, uh, Campbell's our, gritty, dude. <laughs> <It's> gritty. <laughs> our uh, tight ends coach was at Ohio State when Vrabel was there after he just got done playing and he was first getting into coaching. Yeah. And our tight ends coach was saying that like like he was in really good running shape. Like he was going on like eight mile runs at like six, seven minute mile pace. Like he was like hauling ass, he said. And uh one day Vrabel was like, Hey, I, I want to run with you. And our tight ends coach was like, Are you sure? Like, like I, I go pretty quick, man. Like you, you want me to slow down or like, <laughs> yeah. like you know what? Like, cause like, you know, I've been doing this for a while, you know, like you're just getting done playing. Like, I, I don't know if you can keep up. And Brable was like, just run how you run. And Brable ran with them for like eight miles, kept pace the whole way. And our Titans oh, coach was like, I, I don't know how he did it. Like he is fresh out of playing. Like he's still a little bit bigger. And he yeah, just like exactly. would not let me out compete him, even though we were just going for a wow. jog. Yeah, such that's a crazy. football guy. That's such yeah, a football no, guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, dude. Uh, we, yeah, I, I could totally see that for sure. Um, 
so when we when I got drafted there, we had our little rookie mini camp, you know, like our first or I think it was our second or third day we got there. And um, we're doing like this punt drill. We have to come and like strike a blocker. And he's the guy holding the pad. And we're yeah. freaking like striking the shit out of him. And he's just like taking it like, come on, like hit it harder. I'm like, dude, this is a head coach. This guy's nuts. Like, what? This is sick. You know, because I just pictured, you know, the head coach just kind of chilling from afar and just watching. But I'm like, dude, these guys are sick. They're in the grind with it. Um, but that's just who he is. That's who Brable is. He's just like a guy that, I don't know, he's one of the boys. He loves like, you know, being a part of that stuff. And the dude loves football. You know, him and Campbell, they both love football, yeah. which is cool. I feel like that's not too different from a lot of like the same themes that we saw at Oregon under Mario, right? I feel like yeah, it had to be like similar, like obviously like first one in, last one out type of mentality every single day, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're definitely similar to Crystal Ball and like Coach Joe and all those boys, you know, just how like intense they are and stuff. Coach Mirabal, I mean, he's always on everyone's ass and stuff. <laughs> but, no I mean, doubt. yeah, they're honestly really similar, dude. Like, that's, like, a perfect comparison for sure. Yeah, it's, I mean, now, now that we're on the topic of Oregon, you know, a little background, that's how we all met. Um, me and Brady and Walk obviously grew up playing against each other in high school and youth sports just because we're from the same state. And, you know, we all became pretty close at Oregon. But, I mean, someone are obviously an Oregon legend we have here in, the, in our midst in Brady Breeze, but some would argue you have the best four-game stretch in Oregon history your last season at Oregon. So we know you opted out COVID year, but you want to talk about that uh, crazy little stretch of games you went on when you were just absolutely balling out in the 2019 season? Yeah, I mean, it was a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, going into the, going into the season, like, you know, it was just kind of scrapping for playing time and stuff, even throughout the season. Um, wasn't really getting much playing time until um, the guy ahead of me got knocked out for targeting against USC. And then I just got like thrown in the game. Like I literally was only going to play like kickoff and whatever, like special teams that game. I get thrown in the game and like, um, you know, made a couple of plays and stuff. And then it wasn't until after that game where the coach was like, okay, like maybe we need to play Brady a little bit more, you know, on defense. And then still like wasn't starting or whatever. Um, but got a lot more reps and started to get some turnovers and stuff. Um, but I feel like after the Oregon State game, like we had like that game ceiling um, turnover and fumble recovery, whatever. I feel like, you know, like Chris Ball was probably like, hey, dude, like we're starting Brady, you know, going into the um, the Pac-12 championship game. So it wasn't until then where I really got my first real like college football start of my career was the, you know, Pac-12 championship game which is crazy that it took that long or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, dude, it was, it was crazy. Um, talk about some of the most fun games that, you know, all of us can remember. You know, those last two games, Pac-12 Championship, Rose Bowl and stuff, all the members, the boys going to Disneyland, stuff like that, holding the trophy at the end of the game, uh, confetti and stuff. That was crazy. I mean, being a guy, you know, from the state of Oregon, being able to play for Oregon and stuff was something that I always wanted to do. I love DeAnthony. You know, um, all the boys, LaMichael, Jeff Mail, John Boyette, um, Kiko Alonzo, like all the boys that I looked up to, you know, growing up and stuff and like would just like worship, you know, the Oregon Duck football players and stuff. Um, and then being able to kind of be a part of that history and make those plays in the Rose Bowl with, you know, Herbert, who's going to be a legend forever. Um, being able to be a part of that history and stuff and be one of those guys who make those plays on those big games was definitely very special to me and it's still kind of crazy looking back like damn you know I was able to make some of those plays like that's crazy just because in the moment you don't really think that it's that big of a deal but then after the game like it was it was crazy like seeing um just the reaction on people's faces like fans and stuff or even just my own teammates like looking at me differently like I'm some superstar I'm like dude we were just out of the bars like two weeks ago. <laughs> why are you looking at me so different like what the heck I thought that was kind of funny like um I don't know people just thought for whatever reason like now I'm just different like I'm a higher status or whatever I'm like dude like no it's, we were just here with the boys like that's what it's all about and about your teammates and stuff but those memories are made dude you know it was a good time and I'll, I'll definitely never forget that yeah, I mean, um, well, don't, don't after, sell yourself after short. Game. Don't sell yourself short. You, were, we were all holding the Rose Bowl trophy, but you were holding your own individual special MVP <laughs> Rose Bowl trophy. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the play in my eyes from that game was when you recover the punt, and then you ran into the end zone, 
and no one really realizes, but like you were about two feet away from like some Wisconsin fan who was just glaring right back at you. I was hoping you were gonna like say something or like toss the ball or something. I was gonna die if you did that. <laughs> no, uh, so the band was actually right there, like right in that back. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. And they were like, like they weren't even saying anything. They were just literally like going like this, like all of them just had like <laughs> crazy reactions, or whatever. But nobody really said anything um, until I got to the sideline. Uh, you guys all know, you know the boy Lucas Nolan. He comes up to me, you know, while I'm on the bench, like get some water. It's like, dude, you realize what just happened? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you just scored a touchdown in the Rose Bowl. Like, holy shit. <laughs> I just gave him like a fist bump. Like, yeah, dude, I'm freaking tired. Like, give me some space. Like, I need some air. But like, gave him a hug and stuff. And it was like a cool little moment that I'll never remember. Or I'll never forget. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. I, it didn't really sink in until after the game. I was like, damn, I was kind of crazy. You know, some of the plays that we were able to make that game. Um, but in the moment, yeah, didn't really sink in until after. No, I think we were all just, you know, honestly tired for that week. I think everyone always forgets the bowl weeks. You are tired. I don't know what you guys were like, but we would practice every day the same way we would normally. And then on top of it, they'd make you go to like Disneyland or go out to dinner or go out to like some parade or whatever. And I think that like by the end of the week, you're like, Jesus Christ, like I'm literally more tired than I would be if it was like a home game. It's, oh, uh, for sure. Yeah. But you can't complain about going to Disneyland. That was yeah, sick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like a bunch of the guys Disneyland like, dude, only... Come on. Yeah, dude. <laughs> when some of the guys are like, dude, I'm only going to Disneyland for a couple hours. I don't want to be tired for the game. I'm like, dude, I got the whole freaking whatever to sleep after the game. Like, we got – we're done. We can do whatever we want after the game. I'll, I'll sleep later, you know. Um, so, I mean, I can't remember who I was with. I think, Nate, you stayed – you and Brad, you guys stayed pretty late. Did you yeah, stay you pretty late, Walk? Uh, I think I was on like the three thirty or four thirty shuttle. I kind of I left no. like midway through, like midway. No, I, I was there for like four hours, I think, and then I left. Oh, okay, so you were there for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Brady, I think we I think we went back at the same time. But we were there yeah, we were until like, we were walking on the bus before the bus was literally about to leave us. We almost yeah. had to Uber back. <laughs> like, like, if, we're, if we're here at Disneyland with the boys, like this is a once in a lifetime thing for the Rose Bowl. You know, like this is this is sick. So we stayed as long as we could. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, what you what you were saying, Brad, it definitely was tiring for sure. Um, the day before the game, I was like, dude, I'm chilling. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Like, I went out to dinner with my family. Um, I didn't even eat. I just sat there and and like got to see them for probably like 45 minutes to an hour, and just hung out with them. But just sat down the whole time, just chilling the day before the game because yeah. I was gassed in Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we were walking, funny. we were walking smiles. We put smiles, you know, on some of those rides going back and forth from the parks and stuff. Yeah, but it was right. sick. It was a great time. Yeah. And speaking yeah. of your family, now seeing your cousin Chase at Oregon, did you play and is like a factor in that decision of him transferring to up to Eugene? I mean, he asked me like, hey, you know, you know, what do you think? And I was like, I mean, I'm never gonna tell you where to go, but he came to work at like I was it'd be super <laughs> sick, you know. But I was ne I never wanted to pressure him and you know yeah. to any decision. But I feel like you know it was a no brainer, and obviously it's worked out great for him. You know, you guys are killing it this year. Um, and he's got an O line with Walk and Forsyth and all the boys still yeah. just killing yeah. it. Um, but I mean, I feel like it was a no brainer for him. He didn't really have to think about it much. I mean, his dad got to play there. I got to play there. Um, you know, Chase and I grew up going to games together, you know, just like worshiping DeAnthony, seeing him take back kickoffs and stuff together. Um, so I feel like, you know, we always wanted to be a part of the Oregon history. And so he got his chance. So that's why he did it. And it's so cool seeing him being able to make those plays, especially in the Civil War. Like, yeah. dude, I was on cloud nine watching that game, see him, you know, be able to get those opportunities and stuff and have the game he had. And being able to, like, do it in our in front of our whole family. Because I know, like, we have tons of Beaver, you know, cousins and stuff, tons of Duck cousins. And for everyone to be watching the same game at the same time was just kind of cool. Because I know everybody was watching. Like, it doesn't matter what was going on. Everyone in the state of Oregon is watching the Civil War. And so for him to do that, like, I know that definitely meant a lot to him. But it was just cool. Like, I was so happy for him because I know he's been dreaming about something like that for a long time. Um, so I'm hyped to see what he does next for sure. Yeah, I mean, we don't we don't try to touch in that game too much uh, with with Walk here. But, with with uh, Ryan, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Hey, I mean, we're going to a good, we're going to a good bowl. As long as we finish it out strong, it's all good. That's right. Next game mentality. Um, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> you talked about it a little bit earlier, you know, it took you to about your fourth year to really get significant playing time on defense. And I know you kind of had some lows early in your career in terms of not, not seeing the field as much as you would have liked. Um, how'd you kind of push through that and just, you know, keep persevering until you got your opportunity and obviously you took advantage of it and ran with it. Um, what really helped you get through that and get to that point where you could shine on the field? Dude, just being thankful. I feel like that was the main thing that I just always try to remind myself, like, you know, going to our little Bible studies and stuff that we have with Bidwell. Just, I don't know, staying in the word, praying to God, like, hey, dude, like, I'm here for a reason. Like, you put me in this position for a reason. Like, help me to always give thanks, but also help me to just keep working and never, you know, take it for granted. I feel like that's what I did. I feel like every single day, I'm like, hey, I've dreamed about being here. Like, why would I want to go somewhere else and transfer if this is the only thing I've ever wanted to do growing up, you know? Obviously, I wanted to play in the NFL and stuff, and I had those aspirations. But I was like, hey, like, I'm here. I'm in a great position. Like, I'm playing special teams. I'm dominating on special teams. Like, why would I not, you know, just keep doing that and work on doing that? Um, but, yeah, it was just really what it came down to, just me being thankful and just waiting for my opportunity. Because, you know, I was always praying, like, Lord, give me just one chance. Give me that opportunity. And when that opportunity came, I was like, hey, I'm not going to, let this go to waste. You know, I was never sitting back in meetings, just like chilling. You know, I was always ready, always taking notes, always studying just in case I got that opportunity. And once I got it, like, you know, I made the best of it, obviously. But yeah, you know, it says in Second Thessalonians, in all circumstances, always give thanks. And I feel like that's what I did. Like, regardless of how sucky the situation was, you know, not playing, you know, just playing special teams, even though when I felt like I should have been playing more defense, I'm like, hey, you know, this is a great opportunity. There's a million people out here that would be wanting to, you know, run down on kickoff and stuff. And I feel like, you know, I've transitioned that, you know, in the NFL and stuff, even being on practice squad or whatever, you know, this past year, you know, not getting much playing time, just like, hey, you know, I'm in the NFL, you know, this, this is yeah. sick. You know, there's so many people that would want to be in my position, even though I'm not playing, I'm not getting the opportunities that I want. But I've just been constantly waiting, you know, throughout this season, like, hey, you know, Lord, give me an opportunity. And sure enough, we got the best Christmas, Christmas present ever. I get to play in the – NFL game, you know, the night of Christmas or Christmas Eve. Um, so I'm definitely, definitely happy with how things are going. But always stay thankful, dudes, no matter what's going on. I feel like that's definitely something that we need to focus on because you lose sight of, you know, how much good stuff that we have. Especially yeah. being an Oregon walk, like those times, dude, there are some great memories. Even the HTC breakfast, HTC dinners. <laughs> I remember all the vets would tell me that. They're, they're like, dude. You're going to miss those freaking waffles. I'm telling you. And sure enough, I see like some Snapchat memories or whatever. I'm like, dude, those freaking waffles were legit. <laughs> like, dude, like that, though, that type of stuff is, you know, stuff that you'll never forget. You know, the memories in the locker room and stuff after the games or even, you know, pre-practice, especially bowl practice is definitely something that was super fun. Um, so make sure to take it all in this year. Don't let those times, you know, be wasted. Don't take it for granted because it's a time of our life that's such a short window, like playing football. You know, even me in the NFL, I'm like, dude, an amazing long career is 10 years. Like, that's such a short time in our life. Like, whatever. Let's say you have a 10-year career walk. Like, you, you'd be playing, you know, really high-level football for 16 years. That's such a small window of your life. Right. So don't take it for granted, dude. Right. Um, no doubt. I think that's – I've definitely kept that in perspective this year, you know, being my sixth year in college, and, you know, it's kind of – everything's your last, you know, like, oh, it's last time in Autzen, you know, when it was senior day and our oh, last bowl game, like we just had our last practice or I've got one more practice, I guess, in Eugene, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's Crazy. definitely something that and it's helped having Alex Forsyth with me, you know, because we came in together, you know, we're going out together and I think we've done a good job of just keeping in perspective of, you know, how far we've come in our six years and, you know, how grateful we should be for everything we had over our careers. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You guys are some of the most slept on recruits of all time. <laughs> now you guys are some Oregon <laughs> offensive linemen legends. Like, you know, it's pretty crazy to see, you know, what your guys' career, you know, has done. Um, but it just shows, I mean, you guys have been through the same stuff, you know, just grinding through, hoping, you know, to get playing time, hoping to get respect yeah. by the coaches and your teammates and stuff. Um, obviously, you guys have made the best of it, that's for sure. Um, but, yeah, like you said, don't take it for granted. Those times go by quick, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, Ryan, you're going to blink, and then you're going to be like me and Brad at a, at a corporate office job, dude. Like, 
Lock in, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, I'll tell you this. This is what my dad told me. It was a great like piece of advice. He's like, hey, dude, no matter how stressful you know college football was, no matter how stressful the NFL is, he's like, dude, worst comes to worst, you can still go have a great job at a desk office. He's like, don't be stressed out going to practice. Don't be worried like, oh, dude, am I going to make a mistake here and there? He's like, just go and enjoy it. Like, do your best. He's like, you know, when your career's over, you can have a great job. Like, Nate and Brad are chilling. Like, they got great jobs. And so, like, I thought that was great advice that he gave me. He's like, uh, don't don't put all this pressure on you. Like, you have yeah. a great life ahead of you. Just enjoy this football and put your best effort, put your best foot forward in the football. And then the life after football will come, too. Yeah, no, that's right. And it's actually such a refreshing thing to hear because you see so often now, especially in college football, like, I, it doesn't like like a coach will like yell at a kid and the kid will like threaten to transfer nowadays we've all been in locker rooms with kids like that and it's just so frustrating like when you're surrounded by 50 percent of your team who's like man it's cold out i'm a transfer like we, we all heard that at Oregon, like the moment we <laughs> yeah. walked in and so just to hear that like all right like yeah like, maybe you're not where you want to be right now but like you're already living the dream is essentially the pieces of what I'm getting yeah I don't know it's just uh the trade and that kind of doubles back to like everything at Oregon where it's like dude we a lot of things we're taking for granted uh even in my opinion the thing I took most for granted was just like the ability to like be playing football with like some of your closest buddies right like you don't you don't get that and once you're uh working that nine to five no more football <laughs> yeah exactly and, no. and I, I think Hunter, one of our old guests, he, he touched on the good, like with his little advice from the vets, it's like all these guys have families and like they're going home to kids and they have like mortgages. It's like, it's not going to be your, like your closest buddies who are your age or your teammates. Like, no. I bet you got some friends on the team, but it's, it is a business, you know? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Like, you know, obviously the NFL is great. Like I'm not going to sit here and say the NFL is <laughs> not fun. Um, but that's stuff that you definitely miss, you know, like, your teammates are just kind of guys that, you know, maybe showed up that Monday and you barely even know the guy. Or it's like a guy, he's got a wife and kids and he's going home to his kids. He's not trying to, hey, like, you know, we got this day off. Let's go out to the bars. He's like, dude, I'm going home to my kids. Like, that's my like thing. I'm I'm going home. Right. I'm not trying to go out to the bars and do whatever. Or like uh, no roommates. I mean, nobody has roommates. Like I got like a freaking house here and I live alone, you know. Um, so it's like, whatever, obviously I have my boys that, you know, I hang out with on the weekends and stuff when we have time off, but it's definitely not the same as college. It's not like guys that, you know, you've grown up playing against, like, you know, we have, or guys that, you know, you've grinded with, you know, from freshman year all the way until senior year. It's not really like that. There might be one or two guys maybe on your NFL team. that's like that, but it's not the same. It's not, everyone's not the same age too. That was something, you know, in college every single person damn near in the whole city is the same age. Like you're in right. such a crazy environment. You go to the bars and everyone's there and they're all, you know, just turned 21 or whatever. Um, and you're all with the boys. It's so different. Yeah. Like we think now, you know, we go to, a, we go with a group of maybe four or five guys and we think that's such a big deal. Like having all the boys in the you know, same town at one time, yeah. but in college, it's like, we just 15, 20 of us 20 guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're on it deep. <laughs> You're taking over the whole bar. Like it's sick. It's it's stuff that you know you don't get. And I remember my dad was always telling me these stories or whatever. And your your parents probably all told you guys crazy stories. You know, going to the bars, or whatever. But it is real. You know, those those are memories that you never forget. And um, I remember I came back for um, the game against UCLA to see you guys play. And it was weird going to the bars. I'm like, dude, I don't know anybody here. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. I'm literally pretty much here with three, four guys that I know, you know, and then Taylor is a shutdown. That's a whole other conversation that we can have. But yeah. We, we had some good, we had some good times for sure. Yeah. That, that is, it is pretty interesting to think about how much of a business it is in the NFL and like speaking of business. So, I mean, you got traded. I imagine that's pretty crazy how you can just like, you got traded immediately like mid season, you know, to Detroit from Nashville, obviously a fun place, but it's like, what happens? Like, with your lease and like I know I know it's very interesting to people who don't really know what goes on behind closed doors like you got to move and go learn a new playbook all that like take us through that process a little bit because I imagine a lot of people are interested in that <laughs> yeah dude that that was crazy so um 
I show up on a Saturday. We had a game, obviously, the following Sunday. This was like a year ago uh, last week. Yeah, a year ago. No, a year ago, two weeks, whatever, however you want to say it, um, was when I got released on that Saturday. So the day before the game, I walk in. I'm about to get breakfast, about to sit down. Lady taps me on the shoulder. Hey, GM wants to see you. I'm like, okay. One of two things is going to happen. Either I'm getting a major promotion or I'm getting cut, which is like not good. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what am I going to get promoted for? Like, I'm already on the active 53 roster. I'm getting cut. So I go in there and he's like, hey, man, you know, we're putting, you know, Derek Henry on the active roster or whatever. We're putting Helio Jones on the active roster. We don't have enough space. We're going to release you and sign you on practice squad. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, when do I sign? He's like, well, you have to clear waivers, you know, and whatever, three days or on that following Monday at four o'clock or whatever it is, like the deadline that you can automatically re-sign a practice squad. So I'm like, okay. So I, um, my family was actually in town to watch the game. Like my brother Bryson came out, my mom, and then my older brother Bo came out too. So they're all there to watch, you know, watch me play the next day. And so I come back and it's probably uh, 10 o'clock by the time I get back to my house. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, don't you have practice? Like, no, I just got cut. Like, you guys want to go get breakfast somewhere? Like, I don't want to think about this right now. <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, what happened? And so, you know, I go tell them at breakfast or whatever. And so I'm just literally sitting around waiting um, until, like, you know, I obviously I called my agent or whatever. And he's like, hey, you know, hopefully some teams can pick you up. So how, how it works is when you get released like that, um, the worst team or the team that has like the worst record, they get the first choice to pick you. So at the time, the worst team, I, I think there was like uh, nine teams that opted in to um, pick me up. Uh, Houston was the worst team. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Houston, but you have to wait until you officially clear. Um, and then it wasn't until like the last second, like Detroit, like put in a claim and they were the worst team at the time. And so um I didn't know, like, this was until Monday. So I went to the game against the Jags and bought, like, a $5 ticket and sat in the nosebleeds with my brothers and watched <laughs> the Titans play the game. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, I might as well watch the game. I might be going right back to Tennessee, you know, so I might as well go watch and see what happens. Um, so I'm waiting until that Monday, don't hear anything. Um, and it's probably 3, it was like, I don't know, 3.45. And I'm working out with uh, Bryson in our little gym at my apartment. I get a text from the GM's assistant guy. It's like, hey, dude, you know, nobody's officially, you know, given a claim. They've offered some stuff, but they haven't officially claimed you. So come on down and sign your new contract to practice squad. So I'm like, all right, Bryce, I got to go. I get in my car. I drive over to the facility. I park my car. I'm walking out. Like, I'm literally walking the GM and his assistant, like, at the front door in the facility parking lot. They're, like, waiting for me to walk in, and my phone starts ringing. So I'm like, what? And it's my agent. So I answer it. And I like told the guy, I'm like, hey, like, hold on. So I'm t I turn around, I'm talking to my agent. He's like, dude, congratulations, you're going to Detroit. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what? Like, I'm, I'm about to go sign my contract in Tennessee. He's like, no, dude, you're going to Detroit. Like, you leave in a couple hours. I'm like, what? Like, are you kidding me? He's like, congratulations. He's like, so hype for you. Da, da, da. And uh, so I, I go back in my car and I'm just telling the gym, like, <laughs> I go back in my car and I finish the phone call with him or whatever. And he's like, hey, you're going to get a call from uh, the GM from Detroit. And like, any minute so you know so excited for you like you know da da da. you're gonna be on the 53 you're gonna play a bunch whatever um and so I get the call from the GM and he's like hey you know congratulations you know you got a flight in like three hours you know we're so excited to see you up here you know you got practice um you got so it was that Monday so we had that Tuesday off so he's like okay you'll come in tomorrow you do your whatever workout and then uh Wednesday you'll start practice like we're so pumped da 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 so I'm like, holy crap. So I, I get out of the car. I go up to the door um, to tell GM, like, hey, I just signed. He's like, hey, I already know. Like, I just got a phone call, too. Super sorry it happened. Really wanted to, you know, keep you here on the team, whatever. Congratulations. So I said bye to him. Saw my safety coach, like, on my way out. He's like, hey, dude, how'd it go? Like, you signed in practice squad? I'm like, no, I'm going to Detroit. So he didn't even know because it's not even his decision. It's the GM's deal. And so he's like, what? Like, what are you, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm leaving. I like, appreciate you for, you know, the time, the coaching, whatever. Like, good luck. I uh, walked over to my special teams coach because me and him had a really good relationship and stuff. So I go and talk to him. Hey, you know, I just want to let you know I'm going to Detroit. Like, appreciate you for teaching me all this stuff. Because he was really – he was a really good special teams coach to me and whatever. 
and he he definitely wasn't happy you know when i talked to him um but he's like hey it's a business whatever like congratulations i'll be watching for you whatever so um go back in my car and i go home my mom my brother and my older brother Bo are both like hey uh, like how to go like how much you signed for whatever I'm like no i gotta get freaking packed right now like I gotta, you guys gotta take me to the airport. Like, I gotta go right now. And so my, they're all, you know, scampering around, grabbing all this stuff. They're staying in my apartment with me. Like, they're chilling for the weekend, whatever. So I just pack up a suitcase and I'm just throwing in any sweatshirt I had. Like, I didn't have snow boots, ski gear, nothing. <laughs> going in anything that's warm, like beanies, whatever. And so I just zipped it up and I went to the airport and um, landed at like 11.30. Then I had to wake up at 4.30. And I'm still like, it hadn't even processed at the time. And so I'm sitting in this hotel in Detroit. I'm like, well, at least I get, you know, another cool opportunity. You know, it's a crazy journey or whatever. Um, so that next morning I'm there doing the physical check or whatever. And then right away, like I meet with my safety coach, like trying to break down, you know, the film, learn the defense. So I had like three days to learn the defense. And then boom, Sunday, I'm freaking playing like all special teams. I'm like a core guy in special teams doing all this cool stuff. And then playing a ton on defense. Like, I didn't play a snap of defense at Tennessee. Like, I was only special teams. And then, boom, like, my first week at um, Detroit, like, got to play a ton of defense, which was great. Uh, we ended up smoking the Cardinals, like, 30 to whatever, 14. It was our second win of the season. So, I went from Tennessee, and we had, you know, eight wins or nine wins at the time. And then I go to Detroit, and it was our second win of the season. So, people were just going crazy in the locker room. Like, everyone's so hyped up. Um, it was amazing, like stuff I'll never forget. Um, but yeah, it was a whirlwind, dude. I literally had a couple hours to like pack whatever. And I just told my mom and my brother, I'm like, Hey, I don't care what you, cause I had my car in Tennessee. I'm like, I mean, I don't care. I would love for you guys to drive the car up. Like that would be amazing, but you don't have to, I know it's far drive, whatever. I'll ship it up or I'll just get a rental car. Cause I only had four games left. Cause at the time, uh, Detroit, we weren't going to playoffs. So I just knew, okay, we only had four games, whatever. Um, but my my mom and my younger brother, Bryson, Bo had to fly back for work. But my mom and my younger brother, Bryson, drove up the car to Detroit. It was like eight-hour drive uh, from Nashville. Got my car. They got to check out the little hotel or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, played a bunch, and it was great. We, had a, we won two out of the four games uh, at the end of the season when I was there. It was a great time. But – Way more fun this year, <laughs> a lot more this year. But yeah, it was crazy, dude. Crazy, That's a crazy experience story. for sure. That's a yeah. crazy story. Yeah. Like going into practice, it was like, okay, I'm th like the first day of practice, like we're full pads, whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to kind of sit back and kind of just learn and whatever. And my safety coach is like, hey, dude, like, you know, we went over stuff this morning. Like, you're good. Like, you're going in. So I go in there and all the bats or whatever. Like, oh, what's that breeze? Like, da da da. Like, new guy, whatever. And um, first, like, it was, like, our second or third play. I'm like, okay, I got to, like, make a statement here. And so I'm trying to think of a way, like, how I can try to at least, like, make an impact or something, at least, like, let people know who I am. So um, it wasn't, like, full tackle or anything. It was just fit up, normal practice. And this running back's running right down the pipe. <laughs> I just written, like, full on derailed them. And everyone's like, oh, shit. Like, what the hell, dude? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> And I picked him up, like, hey, sorry, dude. Like, that was totally out of out of pocket. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Whatever. But everyone after practice, like, dude, like, that was sick. And so I was like, okay, like, I guess that's a good way to try to, you know, make a little impact. But, yeah, it was, it was cool. First day of practice was definitely, definitely cool. <laughs> yeah, I got to make that statement, man. It's like, uh, yeah, exactly. Like stepping on the prison I, yard, right? Yeah. I was, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, dude, I got to, I got to do something. Yeah. But yeah, it's cool. Oh man, well that's a that's actually an insane story. I feel like you're the crazy thing is like growing up, you no one knows about that side of football. No one talks about that side of football. Everyone talks about the superstars who are you know like sign the first or first round picks who sign the multi million dollar signing bonuses every like three years or whatever. But just to see that other side is actually. I feel like to you, it's got to be eye-opening. Is that something like you'd probably want to get into? Would you want to stay in like the football world after the playing days are over? Um, I haven't really thought about – I mean, I definitely want to coach like high school and stuff, but 
I don't know. I've only been in the NFL, like not even a full two years. So I'm still getting the feel of it, you know, obviously, but I mean, it would definitely be cool, you know, to get involved obviously more, but I haven't even thought that far ahead to be honest. <laughs> yeah. But I definitely want to do coach high school, you know, when I'm done playing for sure. The next, could we say the next head coach of Lake Oswego high school? Hey, I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. I don't know. That's about my pay grade. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what are I mean? How's high school football in Michigan? Huh? It's got to be halfway decent. I got good. I mean, it's cold. A lot of running the ball. I guess. Yeah, I I honestly don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't go to any games uh, this year. But yeah. when I was at Tennessee, I um, we would have Fridays off, and I didn't really know anybody that lived in Nashville, besides a couple of my teammates, and they all had wives, or whatever. Because it was a, like a super old team. We're Detroit. We have a bunch of young guys. So like on Fridays, I would just go to some of the high school games. And uh, my agent's nephew was playing for this really good high school in Nashville. So I just went to a bunch of his games, just watching him. Um, Eric Decker's at the game with his kids, like Jesse James Decker's there. Like uh, our punter was there, like, because his kid was going to the school. <laughs> this guy's so old. Like, he's got, like, kids going to the games. Like, it was, it was crazy. Team uh, was. I saw my GM, my GM at the time. Uh, his daughter was a cheerleader. So I'm seeing all these people at the game. I'm like, what the heck? I'm just going to a casual high school football game. And I see all these crazy famous people there. It's kind of funny. Uh, yeah. But there was some good high school football in, in Nashville for sure. But yeah, I assume it's... Detroit's probably legit too. Yeah, I can imagine. Team better of one state, man. All those, all those heads, all that blood going through there. Some good blood <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some good genetics running through that school. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, do we want to do we want to move on to our power rankings now? I think we've got a great episode so far, and I think power rankings will make it even better. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, yeah, that, that's a good one. So, a little power rankings. If you guys don't mind me intro in this, is just that we kind of just rank three things, uh, and you also have an honorable mention. And the so like in the past we've ranked. Food, restaurants, blah, blah, blah. Today, we're going to be ranking superpowers. What would be your three most favorite superpowers if you were to have them? And you also get an honorable mention. We obviously can't. Once something's spoken, you can't take it. So we'll let our guests begin. Okay. Let's see. I definitely want to fly. I've always wanted to fly. Um, love Superman flying, stuff like that, whatever. Uh like super speed would be sick, but I guess I guess Superman kind of has super speed. But being like the Flash, all the stuff that he can do, um, yeah, super speed. Last one, I don't know. Let's see. Probably like invisibility. I feel like I'd be kind of sick, where you can just like do whatever. <laughs> you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> just go up and do whatever. Yeah. We 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 won't we won't get into detail of do whatever, but yeah, do whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that, I mean, I feel like I would be sick. You just be able to just chill. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, honorable easy. mention, super strength. I feel like it'd be sick. Be able to lift yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I don't know what what the level of limitations are for super strength. I feel like what Hulk strength or Thor strength or something. I don't know. I, let's say let's say like Thor strength that's pretty sick that's funny you bring that up because I literally remember we went to go see Avengers one time as a team I, I don't know why I just thought about this and they put up your face on on Thor's body oh in front yeah of the whole, in front of the whole thing and then they had, <laughs> yeah. and they had Devin Lewis as Thanos <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do remember that that was pretty funny I think Panay was who like was Herbert was Herbert like uh, Captain America or something like that yeah, yeah. I think so yeah, that's classic. Um, All right, Brad, you want to go? Sure. I'm going to say, obviously, predicting the future. It's got to be like, did, like going to a casino. I mean, that means you have like unlimited money pretty much at that point. Oh. Um, so stock market, casino, what have you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're thinking like super deep into this. So, so your superpower is just unlimited money. So you're Batman. I am. <laughs> um, are you Batman or are you uh, Elon Musk? Oh. 
It's a good question. Elon actually crazy. how he's like, just put up a poll on Twitter. He's like, should I step down as CEO? And everyone's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, bet. I'm looking for a new CEO right now. It's actually crazy. <laughs> That'd um, be crazy. So then number two, I kind of, I like like Wolverine's powers. I don't know if I can just take a whole superhero because he got a lot of powers, but I take Wolverine's powers, like the metallic claws would be sick. Um, <laughs> and then what about his healing ability or is it just the claws? No, we'll, we'll give him the whole superhero. Cause I mean, yeah, like, give me the, I'll take yeah. the whole set. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take as is. Um, and then probably go number one. Probably do like, God, you already took super strength. So probably do. Jeez, boys. Definitely like time travel. I think like seeing like uh, the dinosaurs would be pretty cool. Also, like going in the future. Oh, you can already see the future. But now, just he, now he can go to the future. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah, but now I can go to the future as well. So, or back in time, so think about that. Okay, okay, yeah. Brian. I kind of I kind of have a, have one that I'll do as my honorable mention. Uh, we'll have Ryan wrap us up because I know he's thinking hard right now. I see him. Dude, I'm having I'm having to look it up because like I don't even. I, I see like him doing some off, research. Like every superpower <laughs> available. Uh, yeah, like kind of like you said, time travel, Brad, but I think the ability to like stop time or like move time faster would be pretty sick. Flash can do that. Super speed. Oh yeah. Super speed. Dude, I'm telling you, the Flash can go in the future. He can go back in time. He can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. So yeah, Nate, idiot. There it is. My honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I'm, I got to get pretty creative here too, because you guys took some good ones. Um. Ooh, I think being able to read minds would be cr- pretty cool. Ooh. Always that was, know that was one of the ones I was gonna do. I will always know what someone's thinking. Um, and then another one would be ooh, this was a good one. I looked at I just looked up best superpowers on Google. <laughs> um how about uh shape shifting? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, that would be sick. And then it's all just the same. I gotta get like nuclear power. That's not a superpower. <laughs> Um, about teleportation yeah yeah teleportation literally just dang it here. Brady come on man I was saying here. that am I not supposed to give hints <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just think, like think think like Brady you're in Detroit right now you just think you're on the beach in Hawaii boom so, there yeah for the flash you just run over there dude there, the like, flash, the flash, I, I think you're giving too much power to the flash there. boom Brady you love the flash <laughs> I'm there yeah, you could fly there, but I could just teleport there. When you teleportation, it, don't you have to look at it and like the jumper movie? You have to oh, like see something. Boom! Oh, I just think of it. Just think. How do you know how to get there? Teleport, yeah. man. Super, super power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's got to be some limits in the teleportation, right? Because like you can't just teleport. Like I feel like you got to have been to the place you are teleporting to to teleport there. You know what I've I mean? Been, I've been to Hawaii. Yeah, I've been to Nate's house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. Up. All right, I'm gonna go number one, spider webs. Like, just if Ooh. I was just shooting spider webs flying through the air, it'd be kind of sick. Uh, number two, I'm gonna go um, telepathy. If you just communicate just by looking at somebody, Ooh, yeah. you don't have to say anything. I think that'd be a pretty good one, especially for the O line. Just signals in your head to the entire rest of the line. I just, just look to Forsyth, look to Sala. We all just know the call of line of um, Silent count would be just insane. Oh, it'd be unreal. Insane. Yeah, quarterback wouldn't just say anything. Snap. Yeah, just literally just snap the ball, no problem. All the receivers know when to go. Uh, shoot, let's see. Oh, I saw one. Oh, if I could, like, steal someone else's powers. Oh, that okay. would be a good one. That's that's gonna be my number three. Like power, yeah, okay. power stealing. So you're just power better stealing than all of us. <laughs> yeah, so, so you just what? You just what? You just took so, all. Our- so I got everyone's. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough one. That was uh, that was definitely creative. 
Shout out, shout out, Brad. Shout out, Brad. That was very creative. Good work, Brad. Yeah. I, mean, I should have had... thought of. Uh, I'm thinking about it now. I should have thought of like super like smartness, like being a genius, like hyper intelligence. Yeah, that'd be a good. Yeah, one. hyper intelligence. But I guess it can kind of include mind reading, or you just Tony Stark, where you just do whatever and you're like super smart. Yeah. I didn't know you're a big Flash guy. That was kind of a curveball. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just I watched the show uh, my freshman year. I binge watched like two seasons. Boom. Yeah, I was, <laughs> well, I was sold. After that, I stopped. I think I made it to season three, and I was like, "That's enough." Yeah, I just watched. I just finished up the White Lotus show on uh, HBO. Oh, yeah. The White. I heard it's good. That's a crazy show, boys. Like, I'll be honest. That's a uh, the ending's kind of wild, but we'll we'll have a we'll we'll dip into the like show movie reviews and for an episode you can just do a deep dive into your review, Brad. Yeah, I mean, no problem. We'll we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Uh, right. Ryan, Ryan your time. trivia. Yeah. All right, I've got a I've got a good one. All right, so we're currently joined by the 2020 Rose Bowl defensive MVP. So last time before that, Oregon played in the Rose Bowl was the 2015 Rose Bowl, the 2014 season. Who was Oregon's offensive and defensive MVPs from that game? The yeah. obviously Mariota. Boom. Yeah. Defensive was it Tony Washington with the fumble recovery? I don't. I don't answer correct until everyone has said their uh, guess. Whoa! Got to got to submit. They were playing. Got to submit your answers. Wait. I'm going Mariota as well. I don't know about Brad. Mariota is a given. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, I already said it. Yeah. I know my answer now. Okay. But Brad submit or Brady submits his answer. Was it? Well, I, yeah. I already I already said it though. I can't I can't backtrack. I'm trying to think of all the all the players on that defense. They had Eric Armstead, DeForest Buckner. Yeah. Yeah, dogs. Dogs. They had Defo and Armstead. It's like. That, I mean, yeah, that play's so iconic. I I think I. I've seen a picture of like Tony up on the stage with the trophy. I, I'm gonna go Tony too. I'm gonna go Tony. Brad, just because I mean I feel like I can't have the same. In my heart of hearts, I probably think it's Tony, but it's. I'm just gonna say Eric Armstead. Yeah, it was Mariota was the offensive, and Tony Washington was the defensive. Yeah, let's yeah. Go. yeah there we go. Real duck man. Brad, like, Brad's yeah. just being a good sport by not giving the same answer. I think Brad, Brad knew that one deep down. No, I did. I mean, Tony is. It's so funny that he's working at the school now. Yeah. A little fun fact for yeah, all you sure. listeners out there: Tony working for the Oregon football program now. He's a coach, right? Yeah, he was our D line GA this year, or analyst, one of the two. Shout out, shout out, Tony. He's got he's got some great stories. You know, I've chopped it up with him many times. I, I think he'd be a great future guest on the pod too. No doubt. Yeah, he's he's a good guy. Um, so what's what's next for you, Brady? What what are we doing after the season? What are your after season plan? Are you hitting vacation? Are we going back after, to Oregon to train or what? After after the Lions win the Super Bowl, obviously. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um boom, straight to Tampa. <laughs> right after the season, straight to Tampa, right on the beach, chilling. Away from the cold for a while. For sure. Is that your uh, <laughs> off-season home base? Yeah, yeah. So my older brother Bo, um, we share a little apartment down there, um, in uh, in Tampa, right by the water. So, boom, going right there, right after. I already got my flight booked, but I made sure to pay for it to where I can change it at any time. For that very <laughs> That's reason. Right. <laughs> That's right. Well. well, well Brady, yeah. thanks for joining us. It was a really fun episode. Um, and best of luck the rest of the season, man. We're going to be watching you and rooting for the Lions. We, we are Lions fans now. Make sure to send us some grit gear because I know all the guys on the pod will love that. We'll, re- we'll rep the sweatshirts that just say grit on the chest. But, yeah, we are, <laughs> we are Lions fans now. Let's go. I appreciate you guys. It was a lot of fun. It's good to chat it up with the boys again. Uh, I'm going I'm to put those grit jerseys or grit shirts in the works. Yes, sir. Time. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, man. Talk soon. All right, boys. Appreciate it.